Do you have an agenda? Okay. Uh, good evening, folks, and thank you for the continuation of our November uh, 14th uh, selectors meeting. Uh, at this point in time, we're coming back into, into a session. And uh, uh, let's have any citizen input. Anyone out in the audience tonight? That's me. Hearing none, we'll move on to administration. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I have uh, three items to make you aware of. Um, first is the Recreation Commission entertained uh, doing the second field at Greeny Park this year as opposed to last year. And so um, you you folks are going to, you've already made the motion. You just have to approve the action. Yeah. Oh, you can do that. Let everybody know. I'm looking at you. Don't look at him. <laughs> They're going to do the Little League field at Greeny Pop before the snow flies. They were supposed to do one every th three years. So it's been accelerated to do two this year. The funding's already in place, so you don't need to worry about it. So there's no motion necessary. I guess I'm just reiterating what transpired at the rec commissioner's meeting. And uh, again, I will contact the vendor to move forward on that. We received from Comcast uh, a check in the amount of $13,622.35. Those are franchise fees. They were anticipated. So we do not need a public hearing pursuant to New Hampshire state law to accept this. This is part of the routine. It's been contemplated and budgeted for, if you will. Lastly, um, we have a contract with uh, W.R. Gillespie and Associates. They are ge geotechnical. How do you like that one? Geotechnical <laughs> firm out of Maine that does our water quality monitoring of the neighbors surrounding the transfer station. As you know, DES has been hounding us for something that we can't find in town and Gillespie can't find from years ago. And it's called a post-closure report. It's, a, it's an assessment and then a report that's generated based on the assessment that has to go to the Department of Environmental Services. And I talked to Gillespie and because the difference between your original award and the new proposal for the additional service is at most 4,200 bucks, that's still within my wheelhouse and responsibility. So I can do that downstairs, but I wanted you to be aware that we're moving in the direction of appeasing DES, Department of Environmental Services. Um, it's an annual report and no one can find it. They can't find it. So we'll be happy to get them their first one from Gillespie. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that all said and done, I'd like to move into the uh, uh, budget presentations. And the first stop is recreation. Would you please go to the podium and... So, um, the mic's doing something funny. Yeah. Um, so we're looking for a, for about a, uh, 10.69% increase this year. Mostly that's due to, uh, an increase in the price that we, uh, what we've been spending on advertising and then in the senior, I think the senior outings as well. And, and, and then also. Um, in repairs. Well, some of salary was uh, more than other years because of the amount of, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the number of events we had with the number of hours. So that was something that went up. Um, and then we took some things out to, to balance it. But um, the only question we have that's not firm here yet is the responsibility for the telephone and camera at the town beach. We don't know if we're splitting that with the police department or it's all on recreation. So we're waiting for an answer back to that. But overall, you know, what Rick said is true. We're asking for a little bit more than a 10% increase. 
Another thing I'd like to point out is for the last five years, special programs has remained the same, $11,000. So, and everything is going up and, and uh, we've managed to maintain that um, budget item. <laughs> Any questions? You know, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's, that's right. Worked on it. Yeah. Worked on it. Yeah. He's it? I'm good. Yeah. Bob? All right. Well, we're going to have to adjust <clears throat> the... Um... 50,000. Yes. Yeah. Because we didn't put in for the 50,000 for the rec coordinator and special pro and the programs. That was a warrant article, so it's going to go back, and now it's going to be a part of the budget. So that so needs to be insert that with special programming. programming. Wouldn't that be in? Um, oh, you're right. Okay, right. it wouldn't be in. Um, but it's not going to go into special salary. programs because it has salary also. So we have to. We just talked with Dan. We have to. It's going to get split so, up. This, that has to be broken out. Then, so yeah, it will have to be. Exactly. That's why it's not here yet. Does it have to be a warrant article again? Or no, or no, 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 we can do it internally. Right. Because now it's automatically in your budget. So now those monies have to be represented in your lines. Right. So probably um, 75 25 split, something like that. Yeah. You can put 75% in salary, 25% into the programs. And then we could always adjust that when depending on what gets paid out or whatever, if money needs to be moved from one line to the other. Okay. But that way there it'll account for it. So, that, so you're saying that should just go into, uh, into the special programs line? So 75% of the 50,000 should go into salaries. Yeah. And, and then the 25% 25 25 would go into special programs. Right. Uh, 45-2-0-2-0-1 and then then 45 yeah, well, you can round it off, whatever. Okay. Just so it tallies up to the 50. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And we'll, we'll, uh, we'll figure out the telephone, what's going on with that. Right. Yes, we, yep. Okay. Thanks. Any questions from any of the audience? As far as the telephone question, the telephone is only in operational use during the summer, right? Yes. It's, I think it's, I it's also camera. And I think it's they actually pay for it year round. Yeah, it's year round. Right. I think it doesn't get. So whose? So Sorry. whose budget is it in right now that has to get a line item adjustment? Well, currently, Rex got it in their budget, and but I think the police also have it in their budget. Well, the police were supposed to pay for it. Is maybe what it was supposed to be. We'll have to. Uh, we'll have to find out. Find out on that to be sure. Yeah. Let's make sure we're not double dipping. Any other questions? I'm good. Nope, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Well, next up is the library. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Mary Reardon. I'm the treasurer of the Gale Library Trustees. The Gale Library budget we submitted to you is for a total of $157,907. This budget is allocated between two areas, the salary expense of $119,757 and operating expenses of 38,150. The current the library currently employs one full-time staff member, our library director, and four part-time staff members. We also have several on-call employees to cover hours. Um, there um, they are included in our salary but at a reduced rate because we're we're calculating how much we think we'll be using them to cover uh, paid time off and that sort of thing. Um, this year, we adjusted our salary structure 
after reviewing compensation for similar sized libraries. Um, this information was um, obtained from the New Hampshire State Library. They provide a spreadsheet of all the libraries in the state with different um, information about them, the population size, what their budget is and all that kind of stuff and how much, um, what their staffing levels are and their pay rates. So we looked at those for libraries um, similar to our size, and we came up with our adjusted rate schedule. Based on that, Quite frankly, we're still kind of on the low side, but we made some improvement to try to keep the existing employees we have. And if we need to, you know, hire new people, we need to, we need to be fairly competitive. Oh yeah, retention is very difficult these days. Um, most lines on our budget uh, have not changed much. The few notable increases in our budget have been on the community programming line. Um, we've increased that budget number to uh, um, support a greater number of events during the course of the year. Um, given the space limitations at the library, we would have to hold more of these actually off-site. For example, we had five programs that we had here at the uh, town hall, an adult painting, a, a mini picture of Country Pond, a pumpkin carving for the kids, uh, creating family archives, a belt looping session, and a pajama story time we held here in this room. Um, and the success of these programs was partly due to the fact that the space is much better than we could possibly provide at the library and that the, in fact, the lighting is much better here. <laughs> so, so your participation was a lot better then? Yes, we had yeah. good participation in all of these. Awesome. And, you know, I can say that um, at the mini painting party, which I attended here, we had nine people. Um, and we needed, each one of us needed a whole table like that. And uh, that would have been very difficult to do at the uh, library. There just isn't space for that. So, so thanks for letting us use your room. Well, the resources are available. You know, you just have to, if you need something out of the ordinary, just ask and we can probably find some space for you. Okay, I'll make a note of that. Mm -hmm. um, the media line of our budget, um, we have not increased this line since 2018. And in that time, the cost of books has increased approximately $3 a title. Um, we've also had to allocate more money to cover the rising costs of the New Hampshire downloadable books, which I'm sure you've all partaken in. Um, it's, it's, it's a service from the State Library where you can download books to your tablet, and mm -hmm. that's very popular. And uh, But we have to pay a fee based on our usage. So, Have you found that that's been increasing? Have you found that that's been increasing? Yes. Our director says yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Mm -hmm. The third area that's um, a notable increase is in the office supplies, which I'm sure the town has run across to the cost of paper and ink and paper clips and oh, yeah. all those kinds of things has increased significantly. Uh, in addition to that, um, this year we need to purchase more library cards. Um, that's a once every five year purchase based on the minimum quantities we have to buy because they're, you know, they say get a library on it and they are pre-numbered. So um, we haven't purchased those since 2019. So this is our, this is our year to purchase them. I have a couple questions for you. Sure. Um, your expenditures year to date on our report just shows the exact same number as the approved budget. But in prior years, 2022, you actually had expenditures, like actual numbers. I'm just wondering why we didn't do it this year. I'm, I'm sorry. The, the spreadsheet that we filled out and sent to you guys, um, the are you talking about the 2024 year to date expenditures as of 2022? That is our actual expenditures. Well, they just match the approved budget, the penny, right to the penny. Um, no, they match that. Well, 
there were some hidden columns in that spreadsheet. And when we copied our section over, I think they expanded. Um, as I printed it out, you're talking about the second column? So we have the approved 2024 20, budget in one column. And then the very next column is 2024 year to date expenditures as of 10-22, so October 22nd. And your expenditures are the exact dollar amount of the approved budget, right to the penny, every um, line. Well, on the one I printed out from that spreadsheet, my approved 2024 budget is 147195 Are we looking at the same column? Yeah. And so our expenditures as of 1022 are 114622 Right. So the salaries is the only one that's different because we're not finished with the year yet. But as far as community programs, 4000 4000 We go down computer maintenance, 25 25 um, no, the the bookkeeping is four thousand, and our expenditure so far up to ten twenty two was twenty nine twenty five. We don't have the right numbers in this thing. So, um, the expenditures at the end of the year, and they get put in retroactively to the previous years, but the the, the trustees manage the money themselves. We don't even have. So um, there is a New Hampshire state statute that um, directs the library trustees to spend their entire appropriation. Um, but because they're, they're semi-autonomous, the budget still has to go through the board, but the autonomy is in how they spend the monies that are allocated to them. It's not uncommon for libraries, and I'm sure that's the situation here. To supplement this amount with funds from different accounts that you have that are that are funds that you can draw on for the purposes of the library. That fair? Yes, we have a we have a separate um, income stream for copy money. When people make copies of, at the library, there's a small charge for that. So we have that. We have people who donate to us, and so that goes into a special uh, account where we then spend the donation based on what they donated it for. Um, and that is separate from our appropriation number uh, yes. for last year, which was 35.8, I think, right? 35,800. Yeah, it's just when you look at this, it, it's something just looks amiss. I mean, it's, they, it's right to the penny, but years ago they had actual dollar penny amounts in there. And, and, and every um, library that I've been affiliated with uses the statutory language literally and entirely. So if you've allocated uh, a gross amount, you'll see that gross amount carried over on the bottom um, with uh, any increase that they want added to it, but you won't get a breakdown of where they are year to date because of the autonomy that they have by virtue of New Hampshire state statute. And that's understandable by statute, but taxpayers, you know, when they're asking for an increase, if they can't see where the money's gone, uh, the, I'm sure. Do I? I don't believe that um, you are prohibited from asking that question. Right, and that's you, I guess you what I'm getting at. If, the, if they're not showing us expenditures, then we don't know what their actual cost. We are are. showing you expenditures. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Not sure. So there were. Um, I'm not sure the spreadsheet. Right. See how they? It just. Okay. Yes. The, so the salary had, obviously didn't get changed. Yep, yeah, and we had. Um, we did send in a version because we filled in the 2021, 23, and we did fill in 2024 as far as the, that was the date that right. we've been given. And this, this looks much fit. better. Yeah. It's actually yeah. down a penny's yep. expenditures. Yeah. So, so as, of, as of October 22nd, sure. that's, what, that's what our expenditures were for this year. Did you send this? Can you send that to Robin, maybe? I can. Yes, I can. Thank you. Yep. Send it again. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Good. Any other questions? Any other questions? Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. <I'm> good. <laughs> Bob? No, I'm good. Thank you, Mary. Hey, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, ladies. Uh, on our schedule is a transfer station, but that is going to be postponed for the time being. And so next up is the assessor. Uh, our contract assessor, um, 
was in yesterday. Uh, the contract they would have them. She's here every Wednesday for a full day. And um, we currently have what's called general assessing services from the contractor. The contracting company is called Murdo. And um, one of the things that I noticed, and you'll be pleased to, to do, is um, the $50,000 for property reval can come out. Last year, you put on the warrant an article to establish a cyclical reval fund, right. which you would add to every year to avoid just what you're seeing here. Right. So it's actually probably a good thing that um, it's there. So that budget, um, you can make a motion if you want. Um, it can be part of the public record, but I'm recommending that you lower the 80 to 30. So instead of $80,000, we'll back out the 50,000 that's right. in the capital reserve fund and just put 30,000 yeah. in the operating budget. So can I have a motion to that effect, please? I'll make a motion to take the uh, 30,000, uh, yeah. 50,000 that is lower to $30,020. Second, motion made by Joe Aiello, seconded by Bob. We need to do a roll call. Uh, need to do a roll call vote. Mike? Mike, are you there? Sorry, I was on mute. Aye. Bob? Aye. Joe? Aye. And I'm an aye, and that's unanimous. And Mr. Chairman, if, if I may, just for the public's edification, I've been provided a list of services. It's not all inclusive, but it's the services that we get for our $30,000 contract with Murdo. If I could just read it. Sure. Uh, building permit, field work, new construction modifications and demolitions, data entry of all building permit changes, land use change tax, meeting with taxpayers, annual assessment to sales ratio, enter all property transactions into the avatar system, review all exemptions and credit applications, annually apply the most up-to-date current use values established by the current use board, review report of wood or timber cuts, prepare the semi-annual warrants, prepare the MS-1, and enter all subdivisions, lot line changes, and mergers into the avatar system as well, and to review and enter all current applications. That would be for tax credits, um, as well as uh, um, a reduction in their assessment based on blind, elderly, and things of that. And there are there are actually prescribed by the, the, the voters thresholds of income mm -hmm. that allow you to qualify for that. So awesome. I apologize for just reading, but. No, oh, that's fine. That's good. That's Thank helpful. you, Jim. Any questions? Hearing none, I think we move on to other business. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, if, if I may. Um, as you know, we have a, a, a line in, in our budget for town council, and it's called legal, and it's just one line, and that's my responsibility. Um, however, um, th there is no policy that prohibits other department heads from picking up the phone and calling town council. I would ask you to consider requiring anybody, any any employee, before picking up the phone and calling town council to um, get approval from either me or the chairman. If it's a personnel matter and I don't, I need not know, that's, that's fine with me. Um, and the reason that I'm asking for this is I'm responsible for the budget, but if I don't know who's spending it on what, I can't convey that to of you. Course. Mm -hmm. So really it's it's information consolidation and I'll be able to share that with you as when you ask, what do we spend it on? That sounds logical. Okay. So with that said, may I have a motion please? Yeah. I move that no employee of the town of Newton engage with the services of the town council without the approval of the town administrator or the chairman of the board of selectmen. Seconded. Motion made by Joe Aiello, seconded by Bob. Uh, call for a roll call vote. Mike? Aye. Bob? Aye. Joe? Aye. And I'm an aye, so that's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, okay. The next item for your consideration is uh, had an opportunity to review uh, RSA 41 colon 29, 
Roman three. Well, I redid the whole statute, but I focused in on Roman three. One that talked about um, duties of the treasurer and reporting responsibilities. And it expressly calls out in the statute the treasurer's responsibility to update the board on the activities with, of town monies, where they reside, what their balances are, sure. interest accrued, and things of that nature. The statute is very broad. It allows you to ask for it anytime. But rather than do that, if we could get on some sort of schedule that the treasurer could rely on mm -hmm. to come in and give you reports, we think that would be helpful and beneficial to the town. Most mm -hmm. definitely. It gives us a better idea as to where we are on a month-to-month -month basis. Yeah. Get a picture of what's going on. Uh, with that said, I move that pursuant to and consistent with the New Hampshire RSA 41 colon 29.3 that at least one a month. Oops, sorry. Oh, sorry. At, at least once town, yeah a month so once a month the town treasurer furnished to the selectmen a reconciled statement balances transactions of all accounts under the control of the treasurer and further that at least once a month furnished to the select board the current balances including principal and interest of all investment of town monies keep going that's a separate motion so uh, with that said, should we put any two motions? All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll second that one. Uh, motion made by Joey Yellow, second by Bob. And just a point of information, should we put a, uh, do we need to put a, uh, a time date on, but it has to be by the second meeting of the month or the first meeting of the month? Uh, I would appreciate if you would grant me the uh, autonomy to, to find out the treasurer has a preferred schedule. You guys are pretty good about your first and thirds. Right. Uh, but occasionally there's a there's a fifth week in a month mm -hmm. and sometimes that throws people off okay. so, and we do robin will be generating a schedule meeting schedule for next year i can, can share that with, with the treasurer the, yeah. and just figure out which awesome. meetings are, are more yeah. conducive for her very good. good so with that all said and done, i should also point out there is a deputy treasurer that may be able to step in when the treasurer can't mm -hmm. fine so with that said i'd like to call joe uh jim Yes, Administrator. Um, I would, when you when you talk with the treasurer, since we're going to be looking at that, I would like the most recent full month. So I think it makes sense not to do the first week, so that we have the previous months full, because that's what we're going to be looking at. Correct. Yeah. Right. So I I would I would rather that get pushed off, so we have a clear picture. Mm -hmm. of a, that full month every month so we'll be into the second third fourth week whatever it is but we'll be able to say we know what that month that just closed so you're saying by the second week of the month then we should have a we should have a record everything will be in right. mm -hmm. for the yeah. month. all right so it'll be the third tuesday in 2026 every month okay. I think it makes sense. Well, let I'll if there's an you know I'm open to discussion, but I think it makes sense to look at a full month closed. In in that case, um, Mike, uh, you, it, today for example, you would get October's close. Right. Right. Correct. Probably, Correct. But you're right. Correct. That, that's probably a good idea, and it gives them more time to generate. So the we documents. have it by our second meeting yep. of the month. Definitely. Thank you. That's fine. Second. Thank you. So with that said, I'd like a roll call vote, please. Mike? Aye. Bob? Aye. Joe? Aye. And I'm an aye, so that's unanimous. <clears throat> I would also move to authorize the chairman to send a letter to the treasurer, board deputy treasurer, on behalf of the board, advertising her of the foresaid motion. Second. Uh, motion made by Joey Yellow, seconded by seconded by Bob. Uh, take a roll call vote. Mike, aye. Joe, aye. Bob, aye. And I'm an aye, so that's a unanimous. Give me a curve. I was going to say aye before you said Joe. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote the wrong. Yeah, to make like sure that. we're paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. Uh, next on the agenda is a 2025 warrant article review. Again, just look at last year's, see which warrant articles you'd like to appear on this year's warrant. Um, there is some, there are some perennials that happen every year. 
Um, and I will also do that too. We'll be making some recommendations of ones that should be included or ones that were like a one-off, one and done. Sure. Um, and that's just leading us up to the public hearing in January on the operating budget, any bond suggestions, and a review of warrant articles. And that's a statutory meeting. Customarily, I believe it's, you have to hold it before the 17th right. of mm -hmm. January. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's all the business that I have for the board. Thank you. Is there anything, uh, anything anyone has from out in the audience that, uh, anything, Bob, you have anything? No. No, Joe? Uh, the only thing I'd like to say is uh, this past week, uh, this past Monday, we had a uh, Veterans Day celebration and a breakfast uh, for veterans. And I'd like to thank the folks at Just Church for providing breakfast for, uh, for the uh, veterans. Oh, I have. There's a flood drive on Friday in Town Hall, and they really need flood supplies as well, so everyone should register. Are you coming? And that's tomorrow. <laughs> no, yeah, let's get flood. I'm <laughs> Good deal. I just it, said what Joe was thinking. <laughs> any other business coming before the board? If not, I'd like a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank All you, in Bill. favor? Aye. Motion. Aye. 634. Roll call. Yeah, Mike just said aye. Okay. He was doing roll call. Oh, roll call. Mike? Aye. Bob? Aye. Joe? Aye. And I'm an aye. That's unanimous. Beautiful. Thank you, everyone. Be good, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Get better. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. <laughs>